Good morning, um, kids, and I'm going to start off with the year of Miss Agnes. Before I start reading, though, I wanted to just show you how I had filled in the chart, the character chart um, for Miss Agnes. Though I want to tell you, I got help from Violet and I got help from Jonathan, and I'll show you what how they did. So Violet, I um, had this that she came up with the idea with Bertha that um, she was adopted by Jake and Annie. And then Jonathan um, came up with the idea that Bertha does not um, likes to help her mom. and She doesn't like to try new things like tea. And so that was those are really good ideas. And I wanted to get that on our character chart like I would have done in class. And then Violet for Miss Agnes, she said that she's from England. She likes tea. She's one of the reasons I like Miss Agnes. Her name is Agnes Sutterfield. And she, um, oh, she livened, let's see, livened um, the school. So livened up the school, kind of making it clean and, and neatening it up. And then Jonathan came up with the idea that she's a good teacher. She likes books and maps. So again, I really appreciate those students who are um, submitting their assignments. They help us get smarter. So nice job, Violet and Jonathan. And then if we look down at um, Fred, that she's, uh, Violet came up with the idea that she's named, was named by her dad. She likes school. And that Jonathan realized that she was 10 and he had to figure that out through math. So that was really good. Then yesterday we learned of a new character. Her name is Boko. She's deaf. She lives with Fred. She's 12 years old and Violet came up with that. So that was that was excellent. So I'm going to put this off to the side and then the other thing as I read today I kind of I came up with a basically an input chart um, that I found some information for this next chapter, which is chapter four. I found some pictures of some things that we're going to be reading about. The first thing I wanted to show was this map of the world. Um, it's not the best, but we're going to go with it. Okay. Um, so where these, uh, where the story takes place is up in Alaska, like right up there. So you can see it's really far north. We live here on the western part of the United States. And Miss Agnes comes from this tiny little um, island over here called England. So we can see that she's thousands of miles away from her home. And somehow she's teaching all the way in Alaska. Okay, so let's get our Miss Agnes out. And I'm on chapter four, which is page 18. Okay, all the kids look different that first day too, like something good was going to happen. It was early October and the river was just slushing up. There hadn't been hardly any snow, so all the kids were there. After freeze up, lots of them would go to winter camp to trap with their folks and, and would be there till Christmas. So this tells me that this lifestyle of the people that live in this village is very different from mine. Um, there's something called freeze up, and it's Alaska. I'm assuming that it is um, that it get when it gets really cold, things just kind of uh, stop, and that the kids go to some a place called winter camp. And I think this is a place where maybe they hunt and they fish. But when they're there, they're not at school. So this is very different from how schools run now. I mean, kids except for this year, start usually in September and go through June and not much interferes with that. Not things like um, fishing and hunting and things like that. Okay, let me keep going. There was me and Bertha and the big boys, Jimmy, Sam and Roger and little Pete and the littlest ones, Selena and Charlie boy and the middle ones, Kenny and Plasker, Toby Joe too and Marie. She was the only big girl. Me and Boko were mostly the only ones who stayed in town all winter. That was because we didn't have a dad. Ah, he died when we were little. They sent him to a hospital for people who had TB in Juneau. That's really far away. 
but he didn't get better. Well, I'm gonna add this information to my character chart. I'm gonna add here that Fred's, um, Fred's father died. And I will put this in another color. <clears throat> Can you see that? Okay, so Fred's father died. That's new information. Now, the other thing I'm gonna put in here, and I, I'm just gonna go like this. I'm gonna say uh, school children. School children. There's so many of them um, that were mentioned, and I'm just, I'm gonna do it that way. Let's see, is that my color? Yeah, okay. So if we learn information about them, we can add that there. Okay, let me keep going. Um, we, um, so I'm kind of at the top of 19. We have a picture of him tacked on the wall at home. It was when he went to New Alto one time. There was a priest there who had a camera and he took lots of pictures of everyone. There's my dad leaning against the wall of the old store with a bunch of other guys. He was real young then. He has this kind of old time hat squashed up like all the guys in the picture do. Mama said that's the kind of hat they wore then back in the 20s. And this would be the 1920s, not 2020s. He has on those old kind of summer moccasins, the kind that wrap up your leg a little ways. I know his mama made those for him. She died before I was born as she never knew about me and Boko. My dad's looking at the camera and he's laughing with his eye holes squinched up. Boko looks like that when she smiles too. I think he was a really happy kind of guy. That's what everyone says, always joking. If he hadn't died, there would have been more laughter in our house. Mama is not the laughing kind. Well, I'm gonna add that. Okay, we're getting this, I, this picture of Mama, okay? Um, mama, um, she is not the laughing kind. This tells me that she is serious. Okay. All right. Um, mama may, oh, I keep losing my place because I, you guys are usually help me with that. Um, okay, page 20. Mama works for old man Anderson at the store cleaning and doing the washing and all of that. And she does sewing to sell boots and mitts and Martin hats. She sews really good. She never stops working. If she isn't at the store, she's home baking bread, making duck soup or cooking ptarmigan or whatever we have to eat that day. And when that's finished, she'll take out her sewing. Mama thinks working hard is what everyone's supposed to do. And so she thinks school is just a, wa a waste of time. So again, I'm gonna add to that, this idea she works all the time. We already know that she doesn't like school. So for her, it's work, work, work. Um, Grandpa, runs a little trap line out of the village and gives mama skins from the martin and rabbit seed traps to make hats and mittens and sometimes he gets wolf, wolverine for ruffs the fur trim around the hood wolverine is best for that because it doesn't frost up like other fur. so i'm going to add grandpa because this is a new character and hopefully i can add that down below I'll have to do, I'll put it right here and then I'll fix the chart. So, grand, grandpa, okay, and he lives with Fred and Boko. Boko. I keep on doing that. Now, what I also wanted to show you is pictures of, this is a Martin, okay? see how slim it is it has so they trap and get mar martin fur and then they also trap and get wolverine fur and i think mama is using this 
to for her um, with her sewing. Something happened here with the picture. No, I won't worry about it right now. Okay. It's a lot of work sewing. First, she has to scrape those skins with a special little knife until they're all soft, and that's not far and there's no fat left on them. Then she washes them and hangs them up to dry on the line by the door, not too near the stove or they'll dry too fast. While they're drying, she keeps twisting the skin so they don't dry, won't dry stiff. Me and Boko have to do that part mostly. So this reminds me of Sacagawea in streams, that Sacagawea have this skill of knowing how to take care of furs and turn them into leather and that type of thing. I don't have that skill, but mama does. Um, so that's, that was, that's kind of an aha for me. Um, mama makes mittens out of lots of different kinds of skins. Otter and wolf are good ones, and she gets a lot of money for those. The mittens have long braided harnesses so they can tie your mittens behind you so they won't get in your way if you're working and so they won't get lost. Those harnesses are made of three different bright colors of yarn and they're prettier than anything you ever saw. They have big pom-poms on them for decorations. So this description makes me understand that Mama is a beautiful sewer and that she, her work is lovely. And I think it might be one of the big ways they make money. Um, Mama gets me and Boko to wrap the yarn around a piece of cardboard about a million times to make those pom-poms fat enough. We get tired doing it, but in the end, when Mama cuts the ends and fluffs them out, they look so pretty. She makes boots from caribou legs. Caribou is very warm, and the leg of the caribou is just the right shape already. When you skin the leg out, just cut carefully down the front, and there's a fur tube just right for boots. Mama makes an insole of caribou fur for inside the boots, too. And at the top of the boots, she sews on beautiful fur bands she makes with beads. She always makes flowers on her bands. So again, I just keep this is again and again about Mama and how much work she does how much how beautiful she makes this clothing and i'm going to stop here um, i can see i'm going to have to do this in two parts um, with these youtube videos i can make um, about a 15 minute video and then it, it gets too long so i'll come back and make a second part in just a bit okay kids bye